Beer Kaur and I am an aerospace engineer. Here is my complete bio. I am working as aviation manager with AFU's Aviation Private Limited. You can connect me on the social media also through this link available. So today I will be talking about the basic aerodynamics of aircraft. So first of all, let us know more about the physics of the atmosphere. So as an aircraft operates in the air, the properties of air that affect aircraft control and performance must be understood. Air is a mixture of gases composed principally of nitrogen and oxygen. Since air is a combination of gases, it follows the laws of gases. Air is considered a fluid because it's it answers the definition of a fluid, namely a substance which may be made to flow or change its shape by the application of moderate pressure. Air has weight since something that is lighter than air, such as balloon, which is filled with helium, will rise in the air. So since we all of us know that air is made up of approximately 21% of oxygen and 78% of nitrogen, which by the volume, and the rest of the 1% is made for the other gases. So the ratio of these other gases is 21%, 78%, and the 1%, which vary little, and with the height, although the moisture content drops with the increase in altitude. Proceeding with the atmosphere, there we have layers of the atmosphere. So the layers of the atmosphere here, we can see that the first layer is troposphere. Then next comes the stratosphere. After that, the mesosphere, thermosphere, and exosphere. So till the, ten, uh, uh, till the 10 kilometer from the Earth's surface, there is a troposphere. And majorly in the stratosphere the aircraft usually fly in this layer of the this atmosphere layer then next in the mesosphere the, in this region usually meteors fall happen and if we talk about the spacecraft so the spacecraft usually fly in the thermosphere and the satellites are placed in the exosphere that is as high as 700 kilometer from the surface of the earth So here is another small video. So in the troposphere, we can see, which is 14 kilometers from the surface of the Earth. In this region, usually commercial flights fly in this region. Then after the troposphere, the next layer is stratosphere, which is 50 kilometers from the surface of the Earth. And then followed by the mesosphere, where meteor falls occur. Then after, after the that we uh, mesosphere the another layer that comes is thermosphere uh, where the satellites are placed so that was all about the different layers of the earth now we will talk about changes in temperature pressure and density with altitude so as the altitude increases there are some variations in the temperature pressure as well as the density so first, if we will talk about the temperature. So as in this picture, we can see the temperature when the altitude is 1000 meters. So here temperature is 23.5 degrees Celsius. So when we move above at the height of 2000 meters, so temperature drops to the 17 degrees Celsius. And if we move more thousand meters above that is 3000 so temperature drops and comes to the 10 degree 10.5 degrees celsius so this is how the temperature drops when we go up to the height next to the temperature if we talk about the pressure so pressure as in this picture we can see that at the, at the, uh, here we can see the two points that is the lower pressure as well as the higher pressure so looking at the bottom 
bottom of the picture here we can see that all the atoms that are pressing down which is a, on a, that is the guy which is standing near the mountain so all the atoms in the pressure which is pressing pressing down on the guy at the bottom of the mountain which means that here the pressure is really very high and as this guy climbs up the mountain it reaches a certain height so at that place there are few atoms which are pressing down on that guy at the top of the mountain so which means that at this point there is less press pressure so from this picture we can say that pressure also decreases as we go above the altitude here we can see a plot between altitude and atmospheric pressure so this is the graph between atmospheric versus altitude and here we can clearly see that how atmospheric pressure drops with an increase in the altitude so the next factor comes here is density so it is common that air is compressible compressed air that means that it is more dense which means that less space which is occupied by the air so usually density is a measure of the thickness and density varies directly with the pressure in such a way that if the altitude is uh, the low al altitude the, it will be more dense and if the altitude is high then density it will be the less dense and talking about the sea level the density at the sea level is 1.225 kg per meter cube so here we can see an another graph so which is showing the altitude with respect to the density so as here we can see as the altitude increases so how dan density is varying into this so this is how the pressure temperature and density vary with respect to the altitude so now proceeding with our today's topic that is aerodynamics so first we will talk about what is aerodynamics actually aerodynamics is a branch of dynamics which deals with the motion of air and other gases with the forces acting upon an object in motion through the air so that object can be any kind like an aircraft or any kite or anything which which is the motion through the air or with an object which is stationary in a current of air in effect in aviation aerodynamics is concerned with three distinct parts so these parts may be defined as the aircraft the relative wind and the atmosphere so airfoils plays a major role in the aircraft aerodynamics an airfoil is a surface which is designed to obtain a desirable reaction from the air through which it moves thus we can say that any part of the aircraft which converts air resistance into a force which is useful for flight is an airfoil the blades of a propeller are so designed that when they rotate their shape and position cause a higher pressure to be built up behind them then in front of them so that they will pull the aircraft forward so in this picture here we can see an air force section and and a flow of air from over the surface of the airfoil so these are the streamlines which are formed around the airfoil airfoil section properties differ from wing or aircraft property because of the effect of the wing planform a wing may have various airfoil section from root to tip with taper twist and sweep back the resulting aerodynamic properties of the wings are determined by the action of each section along the span so talking about different types of airfoil so here we can see a picture showing different type of airfoil first one is the early cambered airfoil next to that is symmetrical airfoil then there are, there is super critical airfoil next is clark y airfoil then comes as double wedge supersonic airfoil after that the, there is gaw1 airfoil then comes as 
modern asymmetrical airfoil after that there is circular arc supersonic airfoil and at the last there is GAW2 airfoil so depending upon the aircraft function the airfoil design are airfoils are designed accordingly so if an aircraft has to be a supersonic or hypersonic then the air the, then the airfoil shape is double wedge supersonic or the sweep back laws of physics which affect aerodynamics so there are various laws and here we will talk about the bernoulli's principle which directly affect the aerodynamics so according to the bernoulli's principle an increase in the speed of the fluid occurs simultaneously with the decrease in pressure or a decrease in fluid's potential energy this is equivalent to the principle of conservation of energy which states that in a steady flow the sum of all forms of mechanical energy in a fluid along a streamline is same at the all points on that streamline so mathematically bernoulli's principle is the can be given as the pressure above is the ratio of the pressure above to the pressure below which is an equal to the velocity above velocity below to the velocity above so this can be simply understood over this picture so in this picture here we can see as the air enters this tube it is traveling at a known velocity and a pressure so initially the the devices for the velocity and pressure we can see is nil so that the air is traveling traveling at a known velocity so when the air for airflow enters the narrow portion that is given in the red section here so when the airflow enters this narrow portion the velocity increases and pressure decreases which can be shown in through the needles of this measuring instruments here we can see the velocity of through this portion has increased and the pressure is similarly dropped into this particular region so then as the airflow continues through the tube to the wider portion the both the velocity and pressure return to their original values so next to that we have the instruments so which are showing the same value for the velocity as well as the pressure as it was initially so that is how it works that when the velocity increases the pressure decreases after that talking about the forces on an aircraft so usually there are four forces which acts on airplane that are first lift second weight third drag and fourth thrust so these are the four essential flight forces and when an aircraft is in straight and level flight then these forces are balanced in such a way that lift is equal to the weight and thrust is equal to the drag if we talk about lift and drag so in order to generate lift an airfoil must have an angle of attack which is denoted as alpha so if the alpha is positive that means that the leading edge is higher than the trailing edge which means at such condition the airfoil of an aircraft generate lift in the upward direction so here in this picture we can see an airfoil section and a nomenclature is done over here so the front surface of the airfoil is known as the leading edge and and the last or the bottom surface of the airfoil is known as the trailing edge and the upper portion of the airfoil is known as the upper camber and the lower portion of the airfoil is known as the lower camber and the line which is connected the leading edge to the trailing edge this line is known as the cord line and if we talk about the angle of attack so angle of attack is basically the angle which is made between the cord line of an airfoil to the front or the relative wind into which that airfoil is interacting so this figure basically is showing a cross section of a wing of a straight and level flight the cord and camber are the terms which helps to define the wing's shape while 
flight path and relative wind help to define the movement of the wing with respect to the surrounding air angle of attack is basically determined by the wing's chord line and the relative wind so that is how the angle of attack is determined for an airframe section so there are different cases if we talk about if there is an increase in alpha that is increase in angle of attack so that means the lift will also generate more so as the alpha increases the lift will also increase so in first picture we can see the angle of attack which is 5 degree so it is generating the lift according to the angle of attack so as the angle of attack in next picture increases to the 15% so there will be the more amount of lift generation into that portion so yes as the angle of attack increases simultaneously the amount of lift will also increase with respect to the increase in angle of attack so this in this picture as the angle of attack increases lift also increases which notice that lift acts perpendicular to the relative wind regardless of the angle of attack so here we can see a graph so this is between the coefficient of lift that is denoted as cl to the angle of attack in degrees so as the angle of attack increases so coefficient of lift also increases this continues to the point where coefficient of lift peaks at this point of the maximum lift is called cl max then in in this example the cl max occurs at about 17 degree so if a maximum lift is exceeded lift decreases rapidly and wing stalls so here we can understand the fact that the amount of lift generate generates up to a certain point and if the angle of attack increase more than that point then the lift will start then the aircraft wing will start to stall so at that particular point that is the cl max that up to which we should not increase the angle of attack so here in this picture we can see the different angle of attack through an uh, through an envelope of an air so first picture here we can see a less angle of attack and and in the second picture the angle of attack increases and in the third picture the angle of attack is very much as compared to the first two pictures so increasing the angle of attack beyond cl max causes progressive disruption of the airflow from the upper surface of the wing at first the airflow begins to separate at the trailing edge so here we can see the vortices are generally formed at the trailing edge of the wing in the first picture and, and if angle of attack is increased further then the air flows separation progress forward until the wing is fully stalled so that is clearly we can see in the second as well as the third picture that the separation moves forward and in the third picture the separation uh, moves so that the aircraft wing starts to stall after talking about lift now we will talk about the drag so drag is basically the force which is opposing thrust it is the force which is trying to hold the aircraft back as it flies and generally limits the maximum air speed so drag is created by an any aircraft surface that deflects or interferes with the smooth airflow around the aircraft so here from this picture we can clearly understand that drag is the force which is opposite to the thrust talking about types of drag there are generally different type of drags so first different so the first is the parasite drag and induced drag so these two types of drags are further divided if it, i talk about the parasite drag then it is divided further into interference drag as well as the profile drag and then profile drag has further to then it is a uh, skin friction drag as well as a pressure drag and talking about the induced drag we will talk about first the parasite drag 
So parasite drag is the drag which is produced by the aircraft itself and is proportional to the airspeed, which means that the if the amount of the aircraft will increase in the speed, then the parasite drag will also increase with respect to the airspeed. So generally, parasite drag is of four types. First is form drag, second skin friction drag, third interference drag, and fourth profile drag. So now talking about the form drag, which is also known as pressure drag. So this kind of uh, drag is created by any structure which extend into the airstream. So this is directly proportional to the size and shape of the structure. So usually this kind of drag includes struts, antennas, landing gear, etc. So in this picture we can see the form drag. So this is usually occurs due to the different type of like uh, due to the giant shape and structure of an aircraft and if i talk about the next type of skin friction drag so skin friction drag is basically caused by, by the roughness of the aircraft skin so this may include the paint rivets skin seams etc so due to the skin friction drag there are small swirls or eddies of air which are formed near the surface of the aircraft and this can be improved by flush riveting and cleaning and waxing the skin of the aircraft so skin as it cl clears from the main skin friction drag is usually due to the aircraft smoothness or the surface of the aircraft the more the aircraft surface is smooth there will be the less skin friction drag Next, we will talk about interference drag. So interference drag occurs when various air currents around the aircraft structure intersect and interacts with each other. For example, mixing of air where fuselage and wings meet. So in this picture, we can see the airflow through an, uh, through over an aircraft. So these airflow usually makes a sharp angle which creates the interference drag and such kind of drags can be improved by installing fairings. So last we talk about the profile drag. So profile drag is generally formed by the frontal area of the aircraft. So that can't be changed or affected by anything except retractable landing gear. Now we will talk about another type of drag that is induced drag. So when the airfoil shape that is the type of airfoil and the amount of camber and wing area create a force which comes from the same forces as those of which create lift. So it is directly proportional to the angle of attack which means when the angle of attack increases it will result in the induced drag. As alpha increases, the high pressure on the bottom of the wing flows around the wing tips and fills in some of the low pressure on top. So this creates a wingtip vortex and destroys some of the wing's lift or increases its drag. So this phenomenon of creating a high pressure and low pressure which helps in generating the lift usually destroys the the flow of the air around it which in result form the vortices at the tips of the wing. So this effect of formation of vortex can be reduced by installing the winglets on the tips of the wing. So the, to reduce the vortex, as the vortexes are reduced then there will be definitely increased in lift and thus the drag will be reduced. So in this picture, we can clearly see so an aircraft. So one pa one portion uh, is having winglet, whereas the another portion, which is in blue, doesn't have winglet at the wing tip. So at the portion without the wing tip, here the there will be the more turbulence, and hence there will be the more drag due to the vortices around it. 
and if we install winglet at the tip of section of the aircraft wing then there will be less turbulence and hence there will be really less generation of vortex and which will in result in more lift and reduced drag so that was all about today's session this is my brief bio you can connect me on the social media through the links this is the book pilot's career guide which is written by the captain shekhar gupta this book is available on, on amazon you can get this book from the amazon so that was all about my today's topic i hope you would like this thank you so much for listening this